Hi folks, HR Funk here. With an intriguing little revolver from Charter Arms, this is the Charter Arms Boxer. And as you can see, it is a small frame, double action, snub nose wheel gun. And Charter Arms is a name that's been around in the firearms industry for a long time. The current iteration of the company is located in Shelton, Connecticut, and they have a fairly extensive lineup of inexpensive double action wheel guns. By the way, the Boxer Revolver here was loaned to me for this review by Hot Munitions, and I thought it might be interesting to take a look at this revolver and see just what kind of firearm you get for those budget prices. By the way, the MSRP of the Boxer here is just over $350, so it's definitely well below the price of a lot of competitive options, but for that budget price, what do you get? That's what we're going to find out in this video. Now, before I get into the up-close review of the Boxer, let me address the whole budget firearms concept here at the beginning of the video, because I'm certain there's someone going to appear in the comment section and spout the buy once, cry once mantra, or the you get what you pay for mantra. And to a degree, those comments are accurate. But not everyone who desires a defensive revolver is going to want something or need something that can withstand thousands and thousands of rounds or something that can be dropped out of an airplane at 20,000 feet and then picked up off the ground and still function. Some of those people are just going to want a good, reliable handgun that they can keep in a dresser drawer or they can carry in a holster with them. They're going to shoot it once in a while. And if they have to use it in a defensive engagement, particularly a close range defensive engagement, they just need something that's going to work. Some of those folks also might not have a tremendous amount of money to spend on their defensive handgun. And that's where something like the Charter Arms Boxer that comes in at such a low price might be just the ticket, particularly when it possesses all of the inherent simplicity and safety and ease of operation that you get with a double action wheel gun. So now let's get on with the up close view. And here's our first close up look at the Charter Arms Boxer. As you can see, it is a conventional double action revolver with a swing out cylinder, an exposed hammer, and a 2.2 inch barrel. The Boxer features a lightweight frame constructed of 7075 aircraft grade aluminum alloy. The six shot cylinder is stainless steel and the barrel is also stainless steel. And we can see here that the barrel has a shroud for the ejector rod and the revolver also comes with rubber grips. The Boxer Revolver is a conventional double action design with a swing out cylinder. As you can see here, the cylinder release is located directly behind the cylinder and it is actuated by pushing forward with the thumb, which releases the cylinder. And as I said before, it is a six shot revolver, which you can see here. Being a conventional design, the Boxer can either be fired in double action mode with one long squeeze of the trigger, or the hammer can be physically cocked, as you see there, and fired in single action mode. Turning our attention to the sights, you can see the rear sight of the Boxer is simply a groove in the top strap of the revolver. And the front sight, interestingly enough, is a fiber optic. And I think that gives us a fairly effective sight picture if I can get the front sight to focus again. See how that looks. So in normal lighting conditions, we would have a very fast and effective sight picture from that front fiber optic nested in the rear sight groove that we can see here. Obviously in low light, that's not going to be any real benefit because there's no light for the fiber optic to gather. But in normal conditions, that should be very effective, as I said before. Timing for the cylinder of the Charter Arms Boxer seems to be essentially perfect. On all six cylinders, or all six chambers rather, the cylinder is locking in place just prior to the point where the hammer falls. Similarly, in single action mode, again, the cylinder is locked before the hammer is fully cocked, as we can see here. And that's six right there. Lockup is pretty impressive with this revolver. At the point where the 
trigger is pulled to the rear and the hammer would be dropping to fire, there is no perceptible movement of this cylinder at all. So it is locked up very tight. And by the way, Charter Arms indicates on their website that this revolver is safe to fire with plus p ammunition however they don't recommend it just because of the added wear and tear that that's going to put on the revolver but the boxer is not going to come apart in your hands if you fire it with plus p ammunition the barrel cylinder gap of this revolver is extremely tight the smallest feeler gauge i have is 15 one thousandths of an inch and it will not fit in the barrel cylinder gap this is apparently around a one thousandth of an inch gap which in terms of potential velocity is good but I worry a little bit about the functioning of this revolver as we start to get some build up on the front of the cylinder so we'll have to see how that goes when we get to the range the double action trigger on the boxer is not quite as smooth as I have felt on some other revolvers but those other revolvers cost significantly more than this one does. It is certainly usable, it is serviceable. The single action pull is very nice. There's no perceptible movement of the trigger. The drop off is very light and I'm going to weigh those in just a moment with my Lyman trigger pull gauge and we'll see where that trigger is breaking. And here we go with the trigger pull gauge. We'll see if we can get a double action pull first. Just over 10 pounds, 10 pounds, 2.7 ounces. Give that one more try. I might have overpulled it just a little bit. And that one's a little bit heavier. I'm not getting a good pull on this because I'm having to put so much pressure on the gauge to get the trigger to move. I think it's actually breaking a little lower than this. I'm gonna try it one more time. And that one was almost 12 pounds. So I would say it's on the higher end of average for a double action trigger. I've certainly felt triggers that are heavier than that on double action revolvers. Let's see where the single action trigger breaks. This one should be impressive. Three pounds, 1.7 ounces for that single action pull. Give this one one more try. And just a little bit less that time, just under three pounds and one tenth of an ounce. So not bad all in all, as far as the trigger weight goes on the boxer. By the way, one other thing I wanted to mention about the double action that I've noticed is you do have to be certain to let the trigger go all the way back forward. Now, some revolvers will skip if you don't allow the trigger to go all the way forward, but the boxer, and it's doing it right there, tends to lock the action. I can't move the trigger at all as I'm trying to pull it back until I let it go all the way forward and then cycle it again. By the way, this is something that I wanted to point out because it caused me a great deal of confusion. When I was looking at this engraving here, I thought the boxer model referred to the breed of dog and I was trying to figure out how in the world that engraving looked like a dog. Turns out those are two boxing gloves. So <laughs> the reference is actually to the pugilist, not to the breed of dog. The action of the ejector feels very smooth. Of course, the real test will be when there are six fired 38 special casings in there, and I'm trying to eject all of those. But at least here in the shop, it has a good feel to it. I'm trying to get you a look down the bore here. The rifling in this revolver looks very sharp. Let's see if I can readjust the focus a little bit. And I don't think it's going to allow me to get that, but internally the machining looks very good. The barrel crown looks good that you can see there. As you can see here, the Boxer Revolver does use a transfer bar with an internal firing pin, similar to some other manufacturers, but there is no firing pin or hammer nose attached to the hammer itself. 
When it comes to fit and finish, you don't have to look too hard to find some things that indicate to you this is a budget revolver. I'm going to try to get some of these in focus right here. There is a groove in the frame right here that is a machining mark. I'm not sure if that's coming through on the camera or not. And also, this transition between the ejector shroud and the barrel is a little bit wavy there. When I turn the revolver over to this side, let me readjust the focus again. There's another sort of a wavy line that comes down on this side of the ejector shroud. So you'll notice little things like that that tell you this is not a expensive top of the line revolver. But again, for a lot of shooters, it doesn't have to be. It just needs to be functional. And the functioning part is what we're gonna test when we get to the range. Now, as I said at the beginning of this close-up look, the Boxer Revolver is a lightweight wheel gun. And as soon as my scale gets ready to go here, we'll see it's coming in at 16.7 ounces unloaded. I'll load it up here momentarily with six rounds of 38 special ammunition, and we'll see how much it weighs when it's fully loaded. And fully loaded with six rounds of 38 special ammunition in the cylinder. The Boxer is coming in at just under 20 ounces, 19.9 ounces. By the way, I don't think I mentioned it before, but the Boxer revolver is chambered only for the 38 special ammunition. You cannot chamber 357 Magnum ammo in here. And according to Charter Arms, the Boxer revolver and its other revolver offerings do come with a full lifetime warranty. And that's going to do it for the up-close look at the Boxer Revolver. Now it's time to head out to the range and see how it shoots. So a little bit about what you're going to see at the range. Due to the reality that the Charter Arms Boxer is a 2-inch snubby revolver, I decided to dispense with some of the drills that you typically see me fire when I'm evaluating a handgun. I wasn't really concerned with how accurately it shot from the bench, and I didn't care too much about its performance from extended distances. What I really wanted to see was how it performed within its expected design parameters, that being close range defensive drills. For that reason, I started out at a distance of three yards in a ready position, and I came up, and as quickly as I could align the sights and squeeze off what I felt would be accurate shots, I fired off a full cylinder of six rounds. And here's how that went. So how's that for a start to the shooting test? I have, of those six shots, three of them are on the heart, two of them are lung shots, one of them is a spine shot. I don't think I can start it off much better than that. Everything is nicely centered in the target. When I came up with the boxer to fire, with that bright sunlight that I was getting at the range, that front fiber optic was glowing, it was easy to keep right there, and all I had to do was cycle the trigger and not screw things up myself. So I was very happy with that first test. The action felt smooth. I did start to notice a hitch in the action, and I'll talk more about this later. And I think what I was doing was what I talked about earlier in the video, and I was slightly short stroking the, the trigger. Now I was able to pull through that and complete the drill. And like I said, I will talk about this more and more as we go on through the video. But all in all, from three yards, I was very happy. The ammunition after it was fired, or I should say the cartridge cases, ejected smoothly. There was no problem there. So I thought this was tremendous performance on the first drill with the Charter Arms Boxer. By the way, I noticed when I reviewed the video that I forgot to cover one shot hole with my dark blue sticker here, and it was this one, which was one of the heart shots. So again, very good performance, I thought, from that distance of three yards. Next, I moved back to a distance of four yards, and from there, I fired a multiple adversary drill. So I had two targets this time around, and when I came up from my ready position, I fired one round into the target on the right, three rounds into the target on the left, and then two more rounds into the target on the right, and here's how that went. And there they are, folks, marked with the green stickers. That's six out of six heart shots on that multiple adversary drill. I've got my first and my fifth shot almost touching on the heart here. Three good heart shots here. And then the final shot 
which was my sixth shot right there, almost dead center in the heart on this target. I couldn't be much happier with that performance either. But again, I felt that slight hitch in the action as I was shooting this, telling me that I was slightly short stroking that trigger. And I know this is just muscle memory on my part. The Charter Arms Boxer Revolver obviously has a slightly longer trigger reset than the other revolvers that I'm used to shooting. And if this were my revolver, I would definitely spend a lot of time working on that to make sure that I was properly cycling that action. But as it was, those shots were fired relatively quickly. They're all good heart shots. And again, I was very, very happy with the performance of the Charter Arms Boxer on that drill. Next, it was back to a distance of five yards for some controlled pairs. From that distance, I again started in the ready position, and then I came up on target as quickly as I could, picked up that front sight, and squeezed off two shots to the body of the target. I did this two times, and here's how they went. And there they are, marked in red, folks. From that distance of five yards, I've got three shots that are on the heart and one good solid lung shot. So again, this little revolver really is impressing me as far as its accuracy. The recoil is not difficult to control at all. Those rubber grips are soaking up whatever recoil there is. Now this is standard pressure 38 special ammunition that I'm using. Oh, and by the way, the ammunition for this test was provided by Hot Munition along with the revolver. So thank you to them. But again, we're seeing just really, really good performance. Again, I'm slightly short stroking that trigger. I don't want to belabor that point, but I did experience that off and on the whole way through these drills. But at this point, based on the accuracy that I was seeing so far, I was starting to feel cocky. So I decided to back off to a distance of seven yards and fire a failure drill with two shots to the body and one shot to the head. And here's how that one went. So of course, as usual, when you start to feel cocky, that's when you blow it. From that distance of seven yards, I was pulling everything a little bit low. These two shots are just below the heart right here. Actually, they're both spine shots. And this I pulled well below the head. Now, truthfully, from that distance, doing this kind of shooting, I'm starting to push the limits of that little revolver. And this is probably still pretty good performance, but definitely I did not make that headshot from that distance. And I pulled these a little bit lower than I wanted to. But... Considering the extremely short sight radius that I have with this 2.2 inch barrel, I'm still not feeling too bad with this. It wasn't as good as I usually do in the failure drill, but I usually use larger handguns with longer sight radius and what have you. So now it was time for my first tack shot. I again was still feeling pretty good. I wanted to see how this revolver was going to do from 20 feet and see if I could make it a 20 foot tack driver. And here's how that went. Sneaking up on it, folks. No! <laughs> the Charter Arms Boxer is not going to be a 20-foot tack driver. So no dice on the tack shot. Again, from seven yards, I was pulling those shots a little bit low, and I'm not sure if that's me or something with the sights, but I'm just starting to hit a little lower than I want to from that distance of seven yards, and I couldn't quite compensate for it in my three shots when I was trying to drive the tack. But it occurred to me after the tack drill that everything that I had done to that point was firing the revolver double action. So I decided to move back to a distance of six yards and from that distance come up and fire the revolver single action snap shooting. So I'm starting in a low ready position and come up and as I'm raising the revolver, I thumb cock the hammer and as soon as the sights come on target, I'd squeeze off the shot and I was trying to make these good head shots from that distance of six yards. And here's how that went.
So wow, six yard snap shooting with a two inch snubby revolver. I've got two shots that would stop this bad guy in his tracks and one of them that I think would have taken enough gray matter with it to stop him from committing whatever crime he was attempting to commit. So again, I'm feeling pretty good and now I thought maybe I should retry the tag shot and try it in single action mode. So here's how my second attempt at the tag shot went. Hold that one way low. Oh, let's put the second one through the same hole. And no, even on single action mode, I'm still not going to be able to drive attack with the Charter Arms Boxer. So even firing single action, I'm hitting low from that distance of seven yards, and I'm starting to think that's not me. If you look at my two targets from the tack shots, they are both just about exactly the same distance low, or the same measurement low from that distance of seven yards. And I'm starting to think that might have something to do with the sights, but I'm really pushing that revolver. That's not what it was designed to do. And I'm just trying to see what kind of performance I can eke out of it. And it's just not going to quite do that, at least not in my hands, from that distance of seven yards. So in the end, what are my thoughts on the Charter Arms Boxer Revolver? For a revolver that comes in well under $400 at the MSRP, it ran well. The accuracy was surprisingly good. I think for someone that was looking for an inexpensive revolver that they were going to carry or use in a manner like I described at the beginning of the video, they could do a whole lot worse. Add in the fact that it has a lifetime warranty and I think you get quite a bit for your money from Charter Arms with this little boxer revolver. Now I can't speak for anything other than this one. As I said earlier, they have a lot of other wheel guns in their lineup. But this one, I wouldn't feel really underarmed with if I headed off and I had this in my holster and was going about my day. So that's it for the video today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, as always, make sure you forward those to me. Remember, if you purchase anything from Optics Planet, be sure to use my discount code, which is... And if you use that discount code, it's good for 5% off anything you purchase from Optics Planet. Also remember, the new discount code from Hot Munitions, supplier of this revolver and the ammunition for today's video. If you go to Hot Munitions, you can use my discount code there, which is HRFUNK10, and that'll save you 10% off your purchase from Hot Munitions. See you next time, folks. And until then, good shooting. Bye-bye.